Good afternoon. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be one of the two uh, speakers today in this panel. Uh, as Hiroshi said, I want to give a little bit of background about the Space Exploration Initiative I'm coming from. Now we have a team of 50 students and faculties who are engaged in this mission. Uh, we are a group, an umbrella structure in MIT Media Lab. We're encouraging all the different kind of projects to be inhabited inside the MIT across all the disciplines. So why Space, space Exploration Initiative at this moment? In fact, with the private aerospace company entering the area and protocols such as CubeSats, we have the much better and dropping cost to do stuff with space nowadays. So in MIT Media Lab, we want to democratize the access to space with people. We believe the anti-disciplinary approach is to explore the space for everybody. Our goal is to diversify, to revolutionize, and to realize space exploration for as many as possible. And here, I'm going to share uh, work of myself. And maybe if you're interested, you can come to our exhibition right at the entrance near Post City. There's other five projects from the Space Initiative Exploration, uh, Space Exploration Initiative. So I'm interested in gravity. Then gravity anchors all the existence on Earth. Imagine right now, as a fact, you, me, and everyone you love are pulled by this invisible, unexplainable, still, I hope, force, gravity, to a giant rock which is floating in the middle of the emptiness. And all of our life, all this chaotic world is pulled to one single point every single moment. And one day, when we go to space, okay, this is Ed White, a uh, NASA astronaut. When he first stepped out of the space castle as himself and as for the humanity, and he was floating there. Look at him. It's free. He's like a newborn into this world of emptiness. It's beautiful, and when he was coming back to the space castle, he said, this is the saddest moment of my life because I'm leaving this art world. I'm going back to the enclosed like, space castle. But at the same time, even though the grand moment he had, looking at his footage, I have to say he's, he's kind of lost. He's floating there all alone, only with his tether that is connected to the space station. For me, it looks like a little newborn child with his umbilical cord attached to the Mother Earth through that thread. And it's beautiful. But at the same time, in this witless state, our Earth body completely lost control. Movements don't really make sense anymore. We cannot walk or do anything that we thought was easy and obvious. And if we take a glimpse at the universe, it's very evident that we have to question the possibility of our existence, the basic fact of how we move. And for me, how we move is how we live. So for my project, I want to imagine an interplanetary body, a body that is free from the grasp of gravity, but also inhabit and be in control of itself. That's why I noticed spider. Nature is amazing, that you can find all these, your in inspirations everywhere. Spiders, you know they build webs, but also they have this crazy technique called blooming, that they, okay, this is not real spider, it's like a claymation, but my scientist, but I love it. Um, they make silk threads, and it's so sticky that for the thread, the air is almost like a, like a sticky jelly, liquid to it. So you, as you can imagine, the silk was carried by the current of the wind, and then spider got dragged by it. So inspired by this three-dimensional mobility of spiders, I invented this uh, new character avatar called Orbi Weaver, and she was able to use a handheld device to regain control of her body and move freely through a witless space and a three, in a three-dimensional way. And these are some of the concept shots I was taking uh, underwater with my eyes open. It was very challenging. And I was imagining she was able to move around, like shoot a thread and drag itself. 
And it's very interesting, of course, the concept is much easier to understand if I just tell people I became a spider woman in space. Um, you can kind of understand it that way too. And this is the device I made. It's kind of like a reverse fishing mechanism. So instead of you fish something out there, you cast the thread, and when you rewind, you literally just drag yourself forward. And the interesting thing about it is when you're in space, you're witless. So even though you can be a big uh, person compared to the small device, you still can use the motor as long as your initial momentum is relatively small. Physics really works there. And the outfit you can see I was wearing was made of the 3M reflective materials. So when you take a picture with, uh, take a picture with flash, everything else disappears. You only see the outfit. It's as if you're just in the middle of space with nothing around. And very luckily, with the support of Space Exploration Initiative in MIT, I was able to join the team with other uh, 20 researchers last n November uh, to experience parabolic flight for the first time in my life. And it was amazing in where uh, Orbit Weaver, she was able to deploy this design and be able to try out how it feels to be floating and dragging itself and occupy the space in zero gravity. So here's a little video of it. As you can imagine, before I went to the flight, I was thrilled. I was imagining it's going to be the most exciting thing you could ever imagine. Come on, flying in space. Wow. But in fact, there is nothing called zero gravity. The gravity never disappears. It's just the habit we live in reference to each other. And in the airplane, we're all falling at the same time. And that's different compared to flying. For me, it was a moment of detachment. It's something I was so familiar, the ground left me. And the moment the gravity disappeared, I float, and I was detached, but I was totally lost. I remember the feeling is almost like visceral in a way. It's, it's fear, it's, it's a profound isolation. My friend was not far from me, but I know I just cannot get there. I was kicking and like jumping at the beginning, but I know it's so close and so far away. And that, for me, is important. Imagine you, us, Earth, and our friend Moon, for example, we're just orbiting each other for millions of years and we can never touch each other. So what does it mean? How big the universe is and how hard to be, get, to be able to get into each other and how special we're here together in this place. So if you want to see more of the projects from the initiative, right now we're exhibiting next to the entrance. This is our installation right now in Astrotronica. And I uh, have my device right there. If you can play with it a little bit and looking at the mechanism. So for me, I want to push this project for further. So uh, I'm actually deployed the whole uh, new design of the little sculpture using the same shooting and dragging mechanism. And the whole device is going to be launched into suborbital space next year in January and have a three minutes performance in zero gravity from birth, growing, expansion, and to death. And I want to imagine this orbit self and her being there and embrace this life um, in the cosmos uh, as a rock. Um, so thank you very much, and I uh, hope to talk to you guys later.